Coastal erosion is a global problem, but it manifests differently and is tackled in various ways around the world. Let's take a trip to Sri Lanka, an island nation where a significant portion of the population and economic activity is concentrated along the coast. Here, illegal sand mining to feed the construction industry has severely starved the beaches of sediment, leading to rapid erosion that threatens homes, hotels, and vital railway lines. In response, the country has been working on projects like beach nourishment, where sand is dredged from offshore and pumped back onto the beaches to rebuild them. They are also focusing on restoring coastal vegetation, like mangroves, recognizing their value as a natural, self-repairing defense system against the waves. Now let's fly over to Europe and visit the Netherlands. Much of this country is below sea level, so managing the coast is a matter of national survival. For centuries the Dutch have been world leaders in coastal engineering, building an extensive system of dikes, dams and storm surge barriers. However, they have realized that relying solely on hard structures is expensive and unsustainable. A groundbreaking new approach they are using is called the sand motor. This involves depositing a massive amount of sand, over 21 million cubic meters, in a single strategic location. The natural action of wind, waves and currents then gradually spreads this sand along the coast over many years, nourishing the beaches and dunes naturally. It's a prime example of working with nature, not against it. In the low-lying delta nation of Bangladesh, the challenges are immense. The country is densely populated and extremely vulnerable to sea level rise, powerful cyclones, and the erosion of its vast river delta system. Here, the impacts are felt most acutely by the poor, rural communities whose livelihoods depend on agriculture and fishing. The loss of land not only means the loss of homes, but also the loss of precious farmland to saltwater intrusion, making it impossible to grow crops. In response, communities are working with NGOs and the government on adaptive strategies. These include planting large forests of mangroves, which are incredibly effective at stabilizing land and absorbing wave energy, and building raised earthen platforms where entire villages can be relocated to stay above the floodwaters.